The idea of gas law is one more law to consider in the whole bunch of laws for, for gases, okay? Uh, in this time, we're going to have a different equation. Okay, all of them are different equations, I know. Uh, but this one is, it is slightly different from the others. Yes, we're going to consider pressure. Yes, we're going to consider temperature. Yes, we're going to consider uh, volume, okay? But also, uh, we're going to consider number of moles and uh, gas constant R, okay? The equation for ideal gas law is pressure times volume is equal to the number of moles multiplying the constant R and the temperature. So this is the formula. Sorry, is that the iPad uh, was I was with an issue with the iPad. Okay, so this is the formula. I said it, but this is the formula. Um, P stands for pressure. Okay. V is volume. N represents the number of moles. That's constant that is from the table. Okay, and T of course is the temperature. And what do we say about the temperature in gases? Do we need to convert to Kelvin? Yes or no? What do you think? Do we need to convert to Kelvin? Yes. Mm -hmm. No. Yes. You need to convert to Kelvin. Why? Yes, but at the end, it's asking to... Oh, well, yes, in the end, you will have to do this exercise specifically. In this exercise, you have to turn into cells back right at the end of the exercise. But always, 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 you need to convert the temperature to Kelvin. Take a look why we need to, to convert to Kelvin. The table of the constant uh, the gas constant. It shows you the units of temperature. And it says that in here, for temperatures, all my units are in Kelvin. So, yes, mandatorily, always, this temperature, even in this topic, we're going to be still converting those temperatures to Kelvin. Okay? If the temperature is given in Celsius, you have to convert Kelvin. So here, in this exercise, it says, uh, if I have four moles of a gas at a pressure of 5.6 atm and a volume of 12 liters, what is the temperature in Celsius? As I told you, this temperature is going to be given in Kelvin. When you isolate for the temperature, it's going to give you Kelvin. But in the end, it's asking the temperature in Celsius. So right in the end of the problem, you will convert to Celsius. But you will work with this problem in Kelvin. So basically, it's going to give you Kelvin. The answer is going to be in Kelvin. And you have to convert to Celsius. Okay? So the problem is giving me the number of moles. I have four moles. It's giving me a pressure that is 5.6 atm. It's giving me a volume of 12 liters, and they're asking me to find temperature in Celsius. Besides all those values that I mentioned, you need to consider the constant R. But to find the constant R, we need to see the units that we have. So, I have moles. I need to, okay, wait. I have moles, and here, all my constants are mole based. So I can use any of those constants because all of them are measuring moles. 
Now I need to find a constant that is using ATM. So what R is going to be that? Let's see the units for, for pressure. I have millimeters of mercury. I have ATM. I have joules. And here it says a definition of joules is that joule is equal to liter atmosphere. Okay. And here is giving you kilopascals. So according to this, what gas constant is going to be better for the problem? I need a pressure in ATM. So I'm going to be using which one? One, two, three, or four. I need to use that constant that has the unit ATM. Number two. The number two. The number two. Okay. So in this number two, I'm going to have ATM. So this one is the one that is going to work better for us. Okay. And now I just verify that my volume, volume, it says that it's in liters. So what happens with this volume? I just verify, okay? Here I have ATM, check. I have liters, check. I don't have Kelvin, but I need to find them. Okay, I need to find Kelvin and I have the moles, check. So it means that this second value of R, constant R, is gonna be the one to use, okay? So my data is going to be organized as my data, my given, is going to be organized as n equals 4 moles, okay, pressure equals 5.6 ATM Okay, okay, sorry <laughs> This is student from another section from here Okay, uh, N is 4 moles, pressure is 5.6 atmospheres Volume is 12 liters I need to find that temperature in degrees Celsius and the R is not given in the problem but you can use that table too okay for that and the R to use in this exercise is going to be 0 0.0821 and the units are going to be the units are this liters atmosphere divided by mole kelvin okay so this is what we have these are our givens i need to isolate for temperature i okay yes i need to isolate for temperature okay so the number of moles and the constant they are multiplying the, te uh, the temperature so to the other side they will go, go to divide so pressure volume divided by moles constant is going to be equal to that temperature we're going to replace by the given pressure that is 5.6 atm volume that is 12 liters divided by the number of moles that is four moles and the constant r that is 0 0.0821 liters atmosphere over mole kelvin all this is equal to temperature
So take a look to the cancellation of units. ATM is going to be canceled out with this ATM. Liters with liters. Moles with moles. And in the end, I'm going to have my temperature measuring Kelvin. So we perform this in the calculator. Remember, 5.6 times 12 divided by 4 divided by 0 0.0821. How much did you get? Two hundred four point sixty-three. Two hundred four point sixty-three. And these are Kelvin. This answer is good, but the problem is not telling me find the temperature in Kelvin. The problem is being very specific. It says find the temperature in Celsius. So how do we convert from Kelvin to Celsius? We subtract 273. Exactly. We're going to subtract 273. So this temperature in degrees Celsius is going to be 204.63 Kelvin minus 273. And that gives you how much? Negative 68.37. So the temperature for this gas, I don't know what gas is this, but I know that the temperature is below zero. Okay? It's a negative number. So it is very cold. From this exercise, is there something that you want to ask? Is there something that you want to ask about this topic? Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, you do the calculation in the calculator that it doesn't give me the answer. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, I know why. I know. I just... Okay, in your calculator. Remember uh, an instruction that I gave you since you were in 10th grade. Everything that is in the top, you multiply. Everything that is in the bottom, you divide. So in your calculator, what you will do is 5.6 times 12 divided by 4 and then divided by 0 0.0821 remember everything that is in the bottom is going to be divided did you get the answer now yes thanks okay you need to be very careful on that because this topic is very easy but if you, if you do it wrong in the calculator it's going to be wrong Your camera is on, Naomi, Cindy, Jose. Emma? The quiz is, going, is not included in this one. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Can you repeat? The quiz of next week is about this one also, or not? Mm, no. For next week, uh, well, next week is week number two. I'm not going to apply a quiz. We're going to do a classwork instead. 
okay? Not even on physics also. No, no, we're not gonna do a quiz. Okay, ah, and the uh, formula for this one, we don't have to memorize it or yes. <laughs> Yes. I laugh. Okay, I laugh. I have to. I have to admit it. I laugh. Yeah, you have to memorize it. Am I too mean when I tell you to memorize it? Maybe. Yeah, but guess what? In college, they will force you to memorize those formulas. So, I mean, you adapt now or. If I have an unknown quantity of a gas at a pressure of 1.2 atm, a volume of 31 liters, and a temperature of 87 Celsius, how many moles of gas do I have? So I'm going to write my given. Okay, I'm going to write my given. Okay, I have a pressure of what mold me? The gas has a pressure of 1.2 atm. Oh yes, I'm so funny. A volume of 31 liters. And a temperature of 87 degrees. The problem is asking me how many moles of a gas I have. So I need to find the number of moles. So these are my given. I have pressure 1.2 atm. I have volume 31 liters. I have temperature the 87 87 degrees Celsius. Remember, not Celsius. They need to be in Kelvin, so you need to convert. So we need to convert this into Kelvin and it's going to be 87 plus 273. How much is this? 360. 360 Kelvin. Uh -huh. Now, the problem is asking me to find the number of moles is unknown and then I need I need to know which R I'm going to be using, okay, according to the units that I have. I have ATM liters Kelvin, okay, so which R I'm going to be using. Let's analyze the units that we have. We have ATM liters and Kelvin. So in the table, I'm going to look for ATM liters and Kelvin. Which means so they're going to be used the same, okay? 0 0.0821. R is equal to 0 0.0821 liters atmosphere. Horrible T. Divided by mole Kelvin. Okay? Now... I have my ideal gas formula that is pressure volume equals number of moles constant temperature. I need to isolate for N. That means that R and T that are multiplying N, they are going to go to the other side to divide. Okay. So, in the end, your formula is going to be transformed to pressure volume divided by constant temperature equals to the number of moles. Can you hear that? Well, hopefully you can. And all we do after is replacing by our given. We have pressure that is 1.2 atm. We have volume that is uh, 31 liters. 
we have a constant that is 0 0.0821. Liters atmosphere over mole Kelvin, multiplying the temperature that is 360 Kelvin. All this is equal to the number of moles. Now, let's see how the units are being cancelled. ATM with ATM, liters with liters, Kelvin with Kelvin, leaving you just number of moles. How much is this? 1.26 So how many moles of a gas I have? I have 1.26 moles of a gas. From this exercise, do you have a question? Miss? Uh-huh. Uh, is there like two or one specific um, formula that you're going to use the mostly for us to uh, memorize that? Like The what? isolation, you mean to memorize isolations? Yes. I recommend that you memorize the main equation, PV equals NRT. That's my recommendation. I, I don't like to suggest that you memorize isolations because an isolation process is a process that at this level of, at this school level, you should be able to do by your own without any problem at all. Now, if you want me like to help you to isolate, yeah, I, I, I trust me, I could spend a full class teaching you how to isolate. For me, that's not a problem. I could do it. But you need to know the main equation. That's my recommendation. Is that in this kind of exercises, I, I could ask you, pressure, I could ask you volume, okay? So, uh, there are many things that I could ask you that I cannot say. No, I recommend that you memorize, you know, which one, uh, the one of the temperature, because we're going to use it a lot. No, that's, that's not really what is going to happen, okay? I'm a lazy person. I'm probably going to ask you whatever thing comes to my mind, and and that could be a volume, that could be pressure or or a temperature, who knows? But it's just so risky for me to tell you one specific isolation and imagine that in a quiz I, for, I forgot. <laughs> I, then I said, no guys, I forgot that I told you to memorize this isolation. So no, it's, it's more important that you memorize the main equation. PV, pressure volume equals NRT, moles constant, temperature. If you want, I can spend a whole class to give you all the isolations of this, of this, okay? But in the end, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter because mm, unless you want to pay attention, so yeah, I'm going to give it to you now. Yeah, I'm this lazy. I just copied this formula from there because I'm this level of lazy. You know the true Martinez. A lazy teacher doesn't even want to write the formula. Okay, what if you need to isolate for pressure? The isolation for pressure is going to be um, 
you need to want this is your your main purpose okay this is your main purpose pressure okay so you need to see what are other things doing to that pressure in this case the only value that is affecting pressure is volume. So, what is volume doing to pressure? Is it multiplying, added, dividing, or, or subtracting? It's next to it, which means that it is multiplying. To get rid of this volume, all you need to do is remove it from the main place, but you will send it to the other side doing the opposite operation, that is going to be a division. So pressure will be equal to everything that you have in the beginning, you are not touching it, okay? So you're just going to write it the exact way it was, NRT. The only thing that you are moving is the volume. So now the volume that was multiplying, it came to divide. Just don't forget that to indicate a division, we place a line. In the case that you want to isolate volume, the procedure is going to be almost the exact same. Okay? Wait. In the case that you want to isolate for volume, the procedure is going to be almost the same. You will focus on volume and you will analyze what other things are doing to the volume. Volume is only being affected by pressure. Pressure is multiplying volume. So when you isolate, you need to send pressure to the other side, doing the opposite operation that will be dividing. So the volume is going to be alone here. You won't touch what you had initially. You will, you will just copy it the exact way it was. So you will have NRT. And the pressure that was multiplying came to this side to divide. That could be another isolation. In the case that you want to know the number of moles, well, the procedure I did it here, okay? Um, but still, pressure volume in RT. Imagine you want to know the number of moles. So you need to analyze what things are affecting my number of moles. Sorry. You need to analyze what things are affecting the number of moles. A number of moles is being affected by the constant R in the temperature T. Both are in the exact same level, which means that they are multiplying the number of moles. So these two, they are performing a multiplication. So when you send them to the other side of the equation, they will be dividing. So N is going to remain alone in the other side of the equation. And in this side, you will write PV in the exact same position it was before. So pressure volume remains in the same position that it was. And in the bottom part, your isolated R and T. And to separate, we place a line. For temperature, I think I did the, the isolation here. Mm -hmm. And for R, same equation. Imagine that you don't have the table, okay? And that for some reason I ask you to find R. So you need to analyze how is R being affected. R is being affected by the number of moles and it's being affected by T. N and T 
are multiplying r. Both of them are multiplying r. So when you isolate, they will go to the other side of the equation to perform a division. In the top, pressure and volume will remain in the same position. And in the bottom, you are isolated in and T. And to separate, that's what you have. Just, as I told you, I can spend a whole class teaching you all the possible isolations, but in the end, this, I mean, to memorize all this, it's not worth it, okay? What is worth is that you know the main equation and that you really know how to isolate. Yes. Uh -huh. But you will let us um you will let us use the table of R, right? Yeah, yeah. I wanna ask you to memorize tables. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna leave it here because well, because I, I won't be able to do one exercise in one minute with twelve seconds. So as I told you, I don't have a problem in teaching you how to isolate. Or asking you, memorize the isolations. The bad thing about memorizing the isolations is that you could that you could be wrong in a quiz. I mean, you are stressed, you forgot a little thing, and you write it incorrectly. So, because what? You were studying too many formulas. But when you need to study only two formulas and you know how to isolate, it's not going to be a big deal. So another recommendation will be take all the formulas and try to work in the isolations. If you want, you send them to me after after you finish to work on your isolations without seeing the video. Okay. And I can tell you this isolation is good or this one, ah, you did a mistake here and I can tell you. Okay. That's the help that I can offer. So working the exercises that I sent you about gas laws, we're going to continue with this topic next week.